hey what's going on guys welcome back to the channel in today's video we're going to be breaking down all of the unlockable and upgradable weapons that you can find in your fob as you progress through the halo infinite campaign now the weapons that we're going to review today are going to give you an edge over the standard variants of those weapons so if you're having trouble getting stuck on some of the campaign missions or if you're like me planning on legendary you're going to want a couple of these weapons and i'm going to show you which ones are best which ones are my favorite and which ones you should go get first let's take a look all right so starting from the top guys the upgradable fob weapons are going to be found in your tab menu when you go over to the fob icon and you're going to see that as you start the campaign you're only going to have i think a mongoose a pistol and maybe an assault rifle unlocked and as you earn valor valor is this little emblem up here so currently i'm at 3240 but as you earn valor you unlock each next section like the razorback hog the standard weapons upgraded marines and then eventually you'll start to get the upgraded weapons like the striker sidekick the upgraded ma40 long shot assault rifle etc so as you get more valor you upgrade and get access to these weapons that you can spawn in your fob all right and you might be asking well how do i get more valor what's the best way to do that well it's pretty simple you head to your attack map and all of the missions that you can complete whether they're story missions whether they're unlocking new FOBs, whether it's helping out UNSC Marines that are calling for your assistance, taking out the banished strongholds, etc., All of those things will give you valor as you complete them. And as you hover over a mission, it'll tell you how much valor you're supposed to get. So like, for instance, if you hover over Annex Ridge, now I've already done it, so it says completed, but it would tell you how much valor you would, you would obtain by completing that particular mission. So if you're having trouble completing some of the campaign missions or you just want to take some fun upgraded weapons into the story mission, you can take a pause doing the story missions and go focus on some of the side quests to increase your valor and then unlock, you know, some fun items. All right, so starting off is by far one of my favorites, the Striker Sidekick Mark 50. This upgraded sidearm pistol has really been one of my primary go-to weapons even throughout the legendary campaign for Halo Infinite. And it's for a few reasons. It can hold two extra bullets in the magazine before you have to reload, so 14 total. And it can carry 84 ammunition and backup reserve, giving you 98 shots before you have to find one of the kinetic refill stations to replenish your ammo. Now, unfortunately, with these upgraded weapons, a key note to remember is that you cannot replenish the ammo by finding the standard variant on the ground. So if there is a regular pistol that a Marine was holding, if you walk over that regular pistol, it will not replenish the ammo in this upgraded pistol. You do have to either go back to an FOB to replenish or find one of the many kinetic ammo refills throughout the map. Now this pistol also has a standard 1.4 zoom, but it shoots much more accurately than the old pistol. So you can really spam shots if you need to, and all of your bullets are gonna fly true. The weapon bloom and deviation is very, very low. And as you can see, as I'm fighting these enemies, again, this is all on legendary. It's killing the unshielded brutes in two shots. You hit one headshot to pop off the helmet, one headshot to finish the enemy. And then of course, any, you know, grunt, jackal, uh, skimmer, you name it. If they don't have a shield, it's one shot to the head and they are done. Even if they have a shield, this thing still rips right through them. By far, it's been one of my favorite weapons. Okay, next up is a fan favorite and a little bit controversial for me for a battle rifle. This one is the BR-75 Breacher, which is a close range variant of the battle rifle. It has less ammunition in a magazine and carries less backup ammunition than the standard battle rifle. But in exchange, you get a higher rate of fire and a much higher damage output, but it is at the cost of its weapons accuracy. So this will not be as accurate at long range as the old BR is. So be warned, but for up close and mid range fights, this will absolutely shred any unarmored target and even deal significant damage to armored and shielded targets. For most of the brute encounters, for example, it's two burst, one burst for the helmet, one burst to kill. All right, moving on to the Convergence Bulldog, the upgraded 12 gauge shotgun. Now during my legendary playthrough, I honestly didn't use this one very often because in legendary, you really have to target enemies at far distances because up close, they just absolutely shred you. And this just wasn't quite doing it for me. But this weapon is significantly better than its earlier predecessor because it has 
five extra shots in the drum magazine, giving you 12 total before you have to reload. And it holds 10 additional shells in the backup ammunition, so you can hold on to this much longer before you have to go and find those kinetic ammo refills. Now, in addition to this weapon putting out significantly more damage than the earlier version of the shotgun, it also is much more accurate with each succession shot. So you can really just hold the trigger and run down close range enemies. And because this variant has a much closer bullet spread, this shotgun is actually pretty usable even at medium range. All right, now next up is the Impact Commando. This is the modified VK-78. It has a larger capacity magazine, 20 extra bullets, so giving you 40 total, high-powered ammunition, so it does significantly more damage, but it's at the cost of reduced accuracy with a trade-off of increased range. So this weapon is definitely more of a single-tap fire or short, short burst weapon as compared to the original Commando where you could really just hold the trigger and get very consistent headshots. Now, in my opinion, this is probably one of the best weapons to take into the campaign because of its high, high ammo count. It has 40 in the chamber, 200 in backup capacity, which means this thing can really last you a long time as long as you're conscious about its reduced accuracy. So you really focus on tap fire and headshots, and this thing is going to take care of pretty much any enemy you come across. All right, now moving on to the MA-40 long shot weapon. Now, this is an upgraded assault rifle specifically targeted for mid to long range, and they do so by giving you a higher zoom, a 1.65 as opposed to a 1.4 with the old assault rifle. It is much more accurate at longer distance shots, and this weapon is really best in like burst fire or a single tap fire just by you know clicking the trigger or tapping your mouse a couple times in between shots. You don't really want to hold the trigger with this weapon. Now, of course, this weapon does do significantly more damage than the standard assault rifle, and it is better at range. But a couple of the downsides to it is that it actually holds 11 bullets less in each magazine and then over 100 rounds less in backup ammunition. So you're going to find yourself having to look for those kinetic ammo stashes much more frequently with this upgraded weapon, which puts it pretty low on my favorites list, if I can be honest. Next up is the S7 Flex Fire Sniper. This is an experimental high capacity variant of the S7 Sniper tuned for mid range combat. And what makes this sniper really, really unique is its ammo capacity and rate of fire. This sniper can hold 10 rounds in each magazine and 40 backup. So 50 shots with this sniper rifle, as opposed to the OG sniper with only 20 rounds before you're out and you have to find one of the power weapons ammo caches that are very, very sparse throughout the map. Now this upgraded variant does have a couple of downsides compared to the original sniper rifle. It cannot zoom in to 10 times magnification. So it's only five times magnification and it does a little bit less damage than the standard sniper rifle. But as long as you're focusing on headshots, this is still going to be a great go-to weapon for almost any exploration or campaign mission. All right, guys, the last weapon on our list today is the upgraded Pursuit Hydra. Now, the upgraded Hydra is really unique for a couple of reasons. Number one, it locks on much faster to targets and it can lock on at up to 150 meters away when compared to the standard Hydra, which only locks on at about 100 meters or less. So you can really use this Pursuit Hydra as an alternative sniper rifle and it takes kinetic ammo which means you can replenish it at almost any station throughout the entire mission or campaign exploration you don't need to find a power weapon ammo cache like you do with the s7 now in addition to those upgrades it does have an increased damage output but it's at a cost of lower magazine count so you can only carry a total of 18 shots with the pursuit hydra whereas the standard hydra has 24 shots so that is a bit of a hit but again since this is kinetic ammo 
any station that you would refill like an assault rifle or a pistol at you can refill this bad boy so it's a really good alternative for boss fights that you want to stay a little bit further back on or if you're having problems with vehicles since it can lock on to anything persons or vehicles it's really good against those two All right, guys. Well, that's it for my FOB weapons roundup review. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. What's your go-to weapons? What was your favorite weapon been? So far, I think if I had to choose two from the combo, these would be the two. The Magnum and the upgraded sniper. To me, they're just the funnest weapons to use. And again, I'm playing on legendary, so you kind of got to be really picky about what weapons you use when. I should really have like a plasma weapon or something to take care of shielded targets. A bit faster but overall these just been my two favorite ones so if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to give it a thumbs up share it with a buddy we'll have some more halo content coming your way my next video that i'm working on is an ultimate i just got destroyed an ultimate uh halo weapon guy where we go over all of the weapons in halo multiplayer so every normal gun that you can get their damage output rate of fire what has the most damage per second in other words the best weapons to use uh, if you want to be competitive at halo multiplayer or if you really just want to maximize the sandbox experience now in addition to that i'll have another video i'm working on where i go over all the target uh all the target weapons so all the different targets that i've taken out all of the weapons that you can unlock with those i'll do a similar review as we've done today to show you guys what are those best weapons and which ones you should be taking to your next campaign mission so uh, with that, guys, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you again for watching, and I will see y'all in the next video. Take care. Peace. Elite's an asshole, man. <laughs> Later, guys.